Hello and welcome to my channel All About Accountancy where we convert your accounting problems into solutions. I am your host Professor Tanmay Kesarkar and today I am back with another episode of Subsidiary Books. In my last episode I discussed four subsidiary books that is the purchase book, sales book, purchase return book and sales return book. So today I am going to do an illustration based on these four subsidiary books. Before starting with today's illustration, I would like to remind you that all these subsidiary books have a lot in common. First, their format is common. Secondly, all these books record credit transactions and that too they are related to what? They are related to goods only. So if I am purchasing goods on credit, it goes into the purchase book. If I am selling goods on credit, it goes into the sales book, so on and so forth. We also discussed about the various documents that you will be needing when you are recording the purchase transaction, sales transaction, purchase return transaction and sales return transaction. Whenever you are purchasing goods, the goods come in, so you always make an inward invoice. Similarly, whenever you are selling goods, the goods go out, so you make an outward invoice. In case of purchase return, you always prepare a debit note because you are debiting the opposite party and in case of sales return, you always prepare a credit note because you are crediting the opposite party. Now in today's illustration, we are not going to focus on the documents. We are just going to focus on how to solve a sum based on purchase book, sales book, purchase return book and sales return book. So we are going to do this sum today. So the first thing that you are supposed to do before even starting the sum is to segregate the sum one by one into purchase, sale, purchase return and sales return transaction. So before solving the sum you should first classify the entire sum into four different sections and then we can start with drawing the format and solving the sum. So to simplify the procedure of classifying the sum into purchase, sale, purchase return and sales return, I have made the sections on the board. If you want to make some markings, you can directly make it in the question. So you don't have to draw this or you don't have to write this down anywhere. You just have to make the markings in your question number itself. So if transaction number one is a purchase transaction, I will write P besides it. If second transaction is a purchase return transaction, I will write PR, so on and so forth. I have done the markings in my question also, but in order to explain you, I am going to do markings on the board as well. So let us proceed with the sum. Prepare purchase book, sales book, purchase return book and sales return book for December 2018 in the books of Marshall Industries from the following information. 2018 December 1. Purchase goods from Drew on credit worth rupees 30,000 at 10% TD. Now, this is very straightforward. You have purchased goods from Drew at 10% TD on credit. Now, TD does not matter as of now. Now, your only goal is to classify the sum into various sections. So, this is a purchase transaction. So, against purchase, I am going to write 1. That is, the first transaction is a purchase transaction. So, if you are solving this with me, then you are supposed to write P besides the first transaction. Done? Now, the second transaction. Sold goods on credit to Fiona on credit worth rupees 45,000 at the rate 2% TD. Again, it is very straightforward. I have sold goods to Fiona on credit, so it is going to go into the sales book. So I have written two besides sales, which means that transaction number two is a sales transaction. Moving on to the third transaction, goods returned by Fiona worth rupees 3000. Now Fiona has returned goods to us, which means that I had sold goods to Fiona in the past. So this is sales return. So the third transaction is a sales return transaction. Moving on to the fourth transaction, goods returned to Drew worth rupees 7000 gross. Okay. Now in the third transaction, we saw the word net and in this transaction, we are seeing the word gross. Now what does that mean? 
whenever you make sales book purchase book sales return book or purchase return book you are always supposed to write the net amount into the books you are not supposed to write the gross amount now what do you mean by net amount gross minus any kind of discount is your net amount so again we will be discussing this when we will write this transaction into the books as of now i just want to classify it whether it is purchase return sales return purchase or sales so as i am returning the goods to drew which means that i had purchased it from drew in the past so this is a purchase return transaction moving on invoiced goods to cynthia worth rupees 22000 now what do you mean by that invoiced goods means you sent the goods and if you are sending the goods to cynthia which means you are selling the goods to cynthia so this is a sales transaction so the fifth transaction is your sales transaction clear very much clear don't keep any doubts in your mind rewind the video if you are having some problems now this is a very easy concept so i am sure you will understand it after listening to it twice or thrice moving on further the sixth transaction placed an order with bruce of goods worth rupees 25000 now i am just placing the order is bruce sending the goods right away no which means that this entry is a no entry transaction because this is just imaginary nothing has happened as of now because when i place the order you cannot pass a journal entry for just placing the order the goods should actually be delivered and then you can record your purchase so this entry is going to be a no entry transaction it is not going to be posted anywhere moving on further seventh transaction sent debit note to drew for goods worth rupees 1000 net again this is net or gross we are not going to see that but i am sending a debit note and i told you that you will send a debit note to a person whose account you are going to debit so i am going to debit drew's account and when will you debit the opposite party's account when you are entering a purchase return transaction because if you remember the journal entry will be drew's account debit to purchase return account because drew is the receiver of the goods and you are returning the goods which means it is a purchase return transaction clear so the seventh transaction will be a purchase return transaction so i will be writing seven over here eighth transaction received debit note from cynthia worth rupees 2200 now don't let this sum fool you even though debit note is written look whether you have sent the debit note or you have received the debit note it says that i am receiving a debit note which means the debit note is not important for us if i send a debit note it is a purchase return transaction however if i am receiving a debit note it will be reverse so it is going to be a sales return transaction secondly you can check cynthia's name above cynthia has made a sales transaction so cynthia cannot do a purchase return she has to do a sales return transaction so entry number 8 is going to go over here so you have to just focus on yourself and the documents that are prepared by you if you are preparing a debit note then it is purchase return however if you are not preparing a debit note the opposite party is preparing a debit note you should post it into the sales return book if you are sending a debit note it is purchase return if you are sending a credit note it is sales return however if you are receiving those debit notes and credit notes you have to apply the reverse logic moving on to the ninth transaction Bruce executed our order placed on December 18. Now this transaction is to be entered into the books. Now Bruce is executing the order which means that Bruce is sending the goods to us and if Bruce is sending the goods I am purchasing the goods. So it is a purchase transaction. So entry number 9 is a purchase transaction. And last that is the 10th entry received credit note from Bruce for goods worth rupees 2000. so am i giving a credit note or receiving a credit note receiving a credit note so apply the opposite logic normally credit note means sales return but in case of opposite logic it will be purchase return so the 10th entry is a purchase return transaction now that we have classified the sum properly let us move on to drawing the sum 
now there could be two approaches first approach is to make all the subsidiary books together so make a purchase book leave five to six lines then a sales book leave five to six lines purchase return sales return but i do not follow that approach i like to do one book at a time so let us move on to drawing the format but before drawing the format i want to show you the question once again with the markings that i have done so this is the question so if you can see i have written p s p r and s r besides the transactions which means purchase sales purchase return and sales return this helps me to segregate the question and when i am solving the question i don't have to ask myself whether it is a purchase transaction or sales transaction because we have spent a lot of time on this and whatever markings we have done are thoughtful markings so you don't have to double doubt it so the first step is to always write the name of the organization so in the books of martial industries then i am making the purchase book first hence purchase book then we have five columns in this the date column name of supplier inward invoice number lf and amount rupees now today i have not taken any sort of document numbers so this column is going to remain blank just as the lf column so as we have already classified our transactions i know that only the first transaction and the ninth transaction will be entered over here into the purchase book so let us see the first transaction the first transaction says purchased goods from drew on credit worth rupees 30000 at 10% trade discount so first i am going to write the date then i am going to write the name of the supplier and then we will see how to calculate the amount now i have purchased goods worth rupees 30000 at 10% td so i have to deduct the td and write it over here so here i am going to write into brackets 30000 Minus ten percent. So the ten percent of thirty thousand comes to three thousand. So thirty thousand minus three thousand is twenty-seven thousand. So the amount over here is going to be twenty-seven thousand. And after this, we are supposed to directly jump to the ninth entry. And the ninth entry says that Bruce executed our order placed on December eighteen. So let us go to December 18 and read what was written. So on December 18 it says placed an order with Bruce of goods worth rupees 25,000. Okay. So why did I read that transaction? I read that transaction for the amount. So here I am going to write 26. So the date when the order was actually executed. Name of the supplier is Bruce and there is no TD, no CD, nothing. So I am going to directly write twenty five thousand over here. Now these are the only purchase transactions. So I am going to take the total. So twenty five and twenty seven is fifty two thousand. That's it. Isn't that simple? Now let us see how to draw a sales book. So I have made the sales book over here. For sales book, I have changed only two column headings. that is from name of supplier i made it to name of customer and in place of inward invoice number i made it outward invoice number the other columns remain the same in all the four subsidiary books now due to our classification we know that in the sales book we have to enter only transaction number 2 and transaction number 5 so let us see transaction number 2 Transaction number two says December third sold goods on credit to Fiona worth rupees forty five thousand at two percent trade discount. So again, I am going to write the date over here. Name of the customer is Fiona, and I have to calculate two percent of forty five thousand and deduct it from forty five thousand because I want the net amount to enter the sales book. So let us write the date first. So I have written two thousand eighteen December the third. Name of the customer is Fiona, and the amount is going to be forty-five thousand minus two percent of forty-five thousand. Now two percent of forty-five thousand will be nine hundred. Okay, because for one percent comes to four fifty, and into two comes to nine hundred. So forty-five thousand minus nine hundred is forty-four one hundred.
and after this transaction number 5 that is December 14th invoiced goods to Cynthia worth rupees 22,000. Now in this transaction there is no TD so we don't have to worry about the amount. So the date is 14th and the name of the customer is Cynthia and the amount is 22,000. Now these are the only transactions so I will take the total which comes to 66,100. Again sales book clear, very easy. Moving on to purchase return. So I have drawn the format for purchase return book. Again I have changed the column headings for these two columns. From name of customer I have made it to name of supplier and from outward invoice number I made it to debit note number. Now due to our classification we know that the 4th transaction, the 7th transaction and the 10th transaction are the transactions to be entered in this book. So let us see the 4th transaction directly. So the 4th transaction says December 10th goods returned to Drew worth Rs 7000 gross. Now this is the gross amount so you have to calculate the net amount. But before doing that let us write the date and let us write Drew's name. So date is 10th and name of the supplier is Drew. Now what has happened over here? The amount is 7000 which is gross. So we have to figure out how much discount was involved with Drew. So if you read the first transaction it says 10% TD was given by Drew. Even in this case we have to deduct 10%. So here it is 7000 minus 10% which comes to 700. So 7000 minus 700 is 6300. After the fourth transaction let us see the seventh transaction. The seventh transaction says sent debit note to Drew for goods worth rupees 1000 net. Again I am sending a debit note which means this is purchase return. And it is going to come over here. So the date is 21. Again Drew is involved. But this time the amount given is a net amount that is 1000 rupees. So directly 1000. Because it is net in nature. It is not gross. If you get the net amount directly you don't have to find out the gross amount. Just write the net amount into the books. And the last transaction December 27th. Received a credit note from Bruce for goods worth rupees 2000. When gross and net nothing is given, it is assumed that it is a net transaction. Or no discount was involved originally, hence nothing has been given. So if no information is given, you have to be silent and solve the sum as it is given. So the date is 27. The person involved is Bruce and the amount is 2000. As we are done with this, we are going to take the total. So 6, 7, 8, 9,300. With that, we have come to the end of purchase return book as well. And finally, let us move on to the sales return book. So I have drawn the format for the sales return book. And again, the column headings have changed to name of customer and credit note number. Now as we have already classified, we know that the third transaction and the eighth transaction are sales return transactions. So let us directly go to the third transaction. The third transaction says goods returned by Fiona worth rupees 3000 net and as the amount is net we don't have to do any calculations. So the date is 6, name of the customer is Fiona and the amount is 3000 net. So as it is net I don't have to do any sort of calculations. And directly the 8th transaction which says December 25 received a debit note from Cynthia. Again this is reverse psychology. So if you are receiving a debit note it is not purchase return it is sales return. So date is going to be 25. Name of the customer is Cynthia and the amount is 2200. Cynthia. 2200 the total comes to 5200 with that we have come to the end of the entire sum if you have understood today's video and you are liking my method of teaching 
then please like my video, subscribe to my channel, share this video and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a new upload. I upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you have any queries or suggestions, you can use the comment box down below. If you need in-depth knowledge on any topics and if you want to hire me offline, you can contact me on my social media links or on my email ID. All the details are given in the description box down below. See you in my next video. Till then, this is Professor Dhanmay Kesarkar signing off. Good luck and take care.